now on Saluki Sports View. International students are big contributors to the SIU athletic teams. We find out where they're from and why they came here. At the rec center, people are being told to cover up, but it's not for the reason you may think. And we sit down and talk with a member of the national champion, Flying Salukis. Broadcasting live from the campus of Southern Illinois University at Carbondale, Saluki Sports View starts right now. Good evening and thank you for joining us tonight. We have a variety of stories on the slate ranging from bowling to international athletes. And don't forget about our interview with our national champion. Of course. I'm Sean Conway. We're going to kick off Sports View with a look at the growing number of international athletes at SIU. Yeah, I mean, I thought my drive home was long, but these guys definitely have me beat. Yeah, Barbados is a little farther than Chicago. Sydney Kessler is here and has a story. I'm from South Sudan. I'm from Israel. I'm from Barbados. <laughs> I'm from England. I'm from Slovakia. SIU, home to 1,816 international students, over 50 of which are involved in athletics. India. One question that many people ask is how these students came to find SIU. And the answer resides in recruitment. Our recruitment centers over in China, in fact we have three of them, um, we have partnerships with institutions in Beijing, in Zhengzhou, and then our oldest partnership in Changchun, China, Northeast Normal University, which is not only our oldest established partnership in all of China, but basically in all of the world. Being an international student has many different obligations compared to a normal application. There are three major requirements that every incoming international student must meet. One, the student must have their academic history reviewed. Two, they have to prove that they are proficient in English. Three, and finally, they must show financial stability. Coming from all over the world, many of these students have had very different experiences before they arrived. I served in the military in Israel, it's mandatory, so I came from a, different, uh, from a different formation to a school where you live by yourself as the military. In many countries, studying and athletics is an impossible combination. And that's why many of these athletes have chosen to come to America in pursuit of their Olympic sized dreams. I love that we can actually study and do track at the same time because back home we do have a university and education is basically free, but it's hard to do track and study back at home. With many of these athletes being away from home for such an extended period of time, they are beginning to realize the little things that they thought they would never miss. Of course, my family, because I am so close with my family, but I miss so much Polish food. Oh yeah, Polish bread. You in America, you don't have a real bread, I think. <laughs> Coming from all over the globe, many students are experiencing and liking new things that American students would argue against. Uh, in class, one of the biggest differences is that, is that here we have to do homework and in Brazil we don't do homework and I think it helps a lot. Here is actually better because they force you to, to study the, the, like, the subject and it's, it's really helpful. For Saluki Sports View, I'm Cindy Kessler. SIU has more international students on campus this year than any previous year. Two international players fill out the roster on the SIU basketball team, the same team that is led by one of the most colorful coaches in the nation. Zach Barrett has an in-depth look at the man on the sidelines for the Salukis. There will be a lot of new faces taking the court for the SIU men's basketball team this year, but the man on the sideline is not one of them. Coach Barry Hinson was hired as the SIU coach in 2012, and his news conferences and interactions with the media quickly made him a fan favorite. When you recognize that you have an opportunity to impact people's lives, when a camera's put on to you or a microphone's put on to you, you have the responsibility to say and do the right things. But it was a news conference on December 17th last year after a loss to Murray State that made Henson a household name nationally, not for saying the right things. Marcus was absolutely awful. That's about as PG rated as I can say it. Well, there was a sniper in the gym. Didn't you see that? I mean, we had guys falling down. I mean, we had a guy snipered at half court. Two guys snipered at half court. It was unbelievable. And let's talk about our big guys. Two for 11. How can you go two for 11? My wife, my wife 
can score more than two buckets on 11 shots because I know my wife will at least shot fake one time. This rant went viral and made its way across the country, which is something Henson is still surprised by. I was shocked because I pretty much do that every press conference. I mean, I was like, what are you talking about? I mean, I, this is, there's nothing different from this press conference of any press conference I've had. His players were not surprised either. Center Ibby Jim Day, a recent transfer from the University of Illinois, compared Henson's style to his coach at U of I's, Coach John Gross. Henson's energy and work ethic has been contagious throughout his team. Coach Henson is a pretty intense guy, so he's an energy guy. He's like uh, Coach Gross, because Coach Gross have a lot of energy. It's like a uh, Coach Henson. There's not a day that he comes where he's not at the top of his game. He's always prepared, he's always hungry, he's always ready, and he's always ready to pretty much you know, help our guys out as much as he can. And as for his coaching style? I'm easy to read. I mean, I'm easy to read. I think my players will tell you, you always know where you stand with me, always. And uh, is that a player's coach? I mean, a player's coach to me, a lot of times people say they don't, they don't discipline. I think my guys know I do discipline. Coach Henson hopes this attitude will rub off on his team as they have an early season record of one and one. For Saluki Sports View, I'm Zach Barrett. Henson and the rest of the Salukis will square off uh, against Ohio on, on Friday at six. Coming up after the break, we'll tell you why the SIU Rec Center is making some big changes in how people can dress. And one area team is still in the running for a state title. All that and more when we return. There will be a lot less skin showing at the SIU Rec Center next year. Saluki Sports View's Alex Wilson joins us now to tell us about the coming changes. Alex. A new dress code is about to take effect at the SIU Recreation Center. Starting January 5th, when people show up wearing tank tops or sleeveless shirts, they'll be asked to change or put another layer on. But it isn't for the reason that you may think. Our job in the Student Rec Center is to try to protect individuals the best that we can. And we want every patron that comes in and uses our facilities to come in and feel comfortable and, and, and to feel safe when they come in and, and use an environment. This new dress code is being put in place to help prevent the spread of bacteria between Rec Center members. Uh, and it's done primarily for the safety of all patrons, not only those people that are working out, but those people that are coming in behind them to work out on the same pieces of equipment that they're doing. Troy Vaughn is the Director of Recreational Sports and Services, and he says that he doesn't want his staff to be seen as the bad guys. I'm not in the job, and I don't want my staff to be in the job of going around and, and telling and enforcing people, you have to do this, you have to do that, etc. But it is my job to protect the safety of others. Vaughn says the easiest way to avoid any bacteria spread is to clean the equipment before and after using it. Some students don't like this new guideline and have even started a petition to prevent it from taking effect. Some people don't see the point, you know, we're using old cut up t-shirts to work out and we don't want to use a good t-shirt that we could wear to class or out in public. The rec center plans to have shirts available for a limited time to help people adjust to the new rules. The updated policy will be enforced more strictly in January and will be focused on the two weight rooms and the machines up by the track. New signs will be up in the rec next week informing people of the changes. For Saluki Sports View, I'm Alex Wilson. Some future Saluki football players may come from the five area teams that made it into the IHSA playoffs. Only one team is still in the running to bring home a state title. Sports View reporter Gabe Pishkadamian has more. It's that time of the year again, where teams from all over Illinois compete for a chance to win a state championship. From hard hits to scoring touchdowns, competition in the playoffs becomes a tougher task for some area teams to complete. Well, I mean, it's playoff time. You lose, you go home. You know, there's no, no tomorrow. You just have to play your best. And, and uh, you know, we had some mistakes today. Unfortunately, we were able to overcome them. But, you know, when we get down the road in the playoffs, we've got to be able to uh, eliminate those mistakes and, uh, and not put ourselves in situations. Out of the five area teams that competed in the playoffs this season, only one team has the chance to complete their main goal, win a state championship at Memorial Stadium in Champaign. We always have two or three goals every year. Uh, you know, one of them is to uh, you know, go undefeated in the regular season. Uh, another goal is just to improve each week. 
Um, you know, another goal is to be, uh, you know, in the hunt for a conference championship. The ultimate goal is to, to get the state championship, win a state championship. Uh, I would lie if I tell you that wouldn't be the ultimate goal of anybody coaching in any sport. So for coaches and players that struggle to go into the postseason, what would it take them to turn their team around in order to play for a state title? Advice would just be that, you know, believe in what you're doing. Uh, wherever you're at, if you're starting a new program somewhere, you're starting a program that's down, believe in what you're doing and do things the right way, you know, make good choices, but do things correctly and, uh, you know, teach these young men to be young men when they get out of high school. So head to Heron this Saturday to watch the Tigers host the defending 4A state champions, the Rochester Rockets, for what some will consider an exciting matchup in high school football. For Saluki Sports View, I'm Gabe Pishkadamian. The Heron Tigers host the Rochester Rockets at 2 p.m. this Saturday at Heron High School. After the break, I sit down and talk with one of the flying Salukis that helped bring the school their ninth national title since 1975. And later we'll see what's in store this weekend in the world of Saluki sports. We'll be right back. All right, welcome back to Saluki Sports View. I'm Zach Barrett, and I'm sitting here with Jacob Schwartz, a senior on the Flying Saluki team. Jacob, um, for those of them that don't know out here, can you tell us what the Flying Salukis are? Of course, yeah. So the Flying Salukis are a competitive flight team, and what we do is we compete against the regional level. So that's going to be Purdue, Lewis, uh, used to be U of I. Um, then we have, you know, Middle Tennessee State University, and national level against Ember Riddle. Uh, North Dakota, Air Force, all the top schools in the nation. Uh, but what it pretty much is, it's a precision as price as ethical. Um, what we try to do with the flying events and the ground events. There's the flying events that we do, uh, precision landings, both power on, power off, the navigation event, message drop, um, all those things. And we have ground events that's going to consist of scan, so kind of an all around knowledge test called, called the Simulated Competence of Knowledge Assessment. E6B, which is the flight computer test, um, and all things like that. REC, which is trying to wreck an aircraft like that but by the tail, by the window, maybe even by a propeller, saying, you know, those people are good at that. But those are just a sample of what we do. But pretty much what we do is compete against everyone in the nation. And what do you do specifically? Like, what's your event? Specifically, I try to get as much as I can. I do both landings, so I do power on, power off landings. I do the navigation event. I do scan. I do E6B. Um, and then I do message drop. I'm the pilot for that one. So I do on the regional level all but about three. So try, try to keep it up there. Oh, of course. Um, so you guys have a history of winning here. Yes. Um, 45 out of 46 years going to the national championships. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. That's, um, that's a rich winning tradition here. So do you feel that the team gets the respect that they deserve around SIU and the country? Definitely around the country, uh, I mean, we always hear it, you know, when our alumni graduate or when you go over, you know, excel further in your career, you'll go out in the airlines, go somewhere else, and you'll always find Salukis, and you'll always find some flight teamers, and that gives you a step up in the advantage. Uh, in terms of SIU, we're starting to get the recognition there. They're starting to, you know, find us now that we won the national championship both in 2011 and now 2013, and now they're trying to get to that there. And now you can see by this facility that we're in, you know, it's just a a small sum of what we get here being part of the Flying Salukis, so it's pretty cool. You were a part of that team. I was. What was that like? It's unbelievable. Uh, being a national champion here in that name called Southern Illinois University, I mean, it's something that we've always strived for. You can never expect it. You can't expect a national championship. You can expect excellence through practice, which is what we do, but you can never expect that it. it's going to be by hard work, dedication, and we showed that last year, and the team's looking good this year on the same aspect of that, but, you know, Never can expect a national championship. Do you, I know you just said that you expect good things, but is this team this year as good as the 2013 team, do you think? Or maybe even better considering all the returning starters? Yeah. Well, this can team, it's, it's more in depth, it's a more full team as opposed to having a few high scoring members. We have a fuller team. Um, and to perspective, uh, the regional competition, we scored about 335 points, 349, somewhere in the three, 300s. Our closest competition was Lewis, and they scored about 135. So we won every single event at the competition, and that's just to kind of give you a, a you know, view of what our team can do this year. Now let's go back to actually competing. Mm -hmm. So when you're competing, I mean, our viewers probably, they know what it's like to be in a plane but never fly one. So can you just tell us what it's kind of like while you're competing flying in the air? 
Okay, yeah, when you're doing the flying events, uh, there's not much time to thank, especially when doing landings. We do practice a good amount. You know, we're out here as much as we can practicing every event. And at that time when you're competing, you know, you have that adrenaline rush where your heart's pace going really quick. But once you add full power and go take off, it's pretty much mental memory there. You're doing automation, automation things and it's, it's automatic by that time and kind of lands it on the line. Um, your team's coach, yes. obviously successful. So what does he do to push you guys? He expects nothing but the best from us. We, we have the head coach, which is Jimmy Libazowski. In 2013, we had Nate Lincoln. He retired after winning the national championship, going out on top. Uh, so he's our head coach, but we also have assistant coaches of like Mike Lefevre, Stephanie Armstrong, and then Kim Carter. And you know, when we're at practice, they expect nothing but the best from us. All right, thank you, Jacob. It's been a pleasure talking to you and learning about the Flying Salukis. We'll be right back after this break. The SOU Bowling Club has been hitting the lanes this semester. Sportsview reporter Evan Collins met up with the club president, Sean Kohler, to see what the team's all about. Move over, football and basketball. SIU as a bowling club. Well, we're mostly a small club. We have 12 or 13 members in total. That's club president Sean Kohler. He took over as president after being vice president last year. He says the SIU Bowling Club is more than just bowling. It's a great club just to learn to get to know new people and uh, just to practice and have fun and develop a new skill. Sean's actually in the same major as I am, so it's nice that I can ask him questions sometimes. And I mean, I probably would have seen him without Bowling Club, but I probably wouldn't have known him. Vice President Trisha Hess says anyone can join the club, even if you've never bowled before. Even if they don't know how to bowl, they can come and we can help them. I mean, all of us who travel know how to bowl. We know the basics of it. We can all teach decently well, I mean, beginners. So if you want to just learn how to bowl, we can help you with that too. SIU has even played in tournaments against some pretty stiff competition. Last year we went to uh, Louisville, Kentucky, Lafayette, uh, St. Louis several times, Atlanta, Georgia, and we compete against some of the best colleges in the nation. Perfect games may be rare, but the time shared by the SIU Bowling Club is priceless. For Saluki Sports View, I'm Evan Collins. The SIU Bowling Club rolls into their next tournament this weekend at Lindenwood University for the 6th Annual Lions Classic. From playing rugby as an undergrad at Iowa State to becoming a personal trainer at SIU as a graduate student, Sam Eldridge has dedicated her life to fitness. Sportsview reporter Alan Self met up with Sam to discuss the importance of staying in shape. Governor Jesse Ventura, Senator Bill Bradley, all the way to President Barack Obama. What do they have in common? They've all shared their hand at sports before becoming successful in other careers. Say hello to Sam Eldridge, former rugby player at Iowa State University, where the men are men and so are the women, according to Sam's rugby shirt. But you get the message here, this gal is tough as nails. Sam explains what brings her to SIU in this episode of Where Are They Now? So my undergrad was spent at Iowa State University where I got really involved with women's rugby. And I loved rugby because it's a great stress relief. And the group cohesion between me and the girls was just amazing. We had a wonderful time. I mean, we had so much fun, whether it was out on the field or afterward at our socials. So we're going to be starting off with a back squat. These days, Sam is in the gym a lot. When she's not gearing up for a weightlifting competition that she has found a new love for, she's helping others stay fit as one of SIU's personal trainers. So I decided I wanted to go to graduate school. And as I was applying around, SIU offered me a really great assistantship where I was teaching health. Well, from teaching health, I gained this great opportunity to start personal training. So both those things kind of pulled me in because they were definitely interested in mine. Once a month, we have Fitness Friday, and it's usually held in the group fitness studio or out on court four. And it's an opportunity for everyone that's a member of the rec to come out and partake in a fitness-related activity. Um, so you can definitely give our viewers out there, if they're in high school, some advice if they want to become, you know, professionals in sports to have a backup plan. 
Yes, definitely. I would say have multiple interests. Don't just go for one thing. If you're interested in multiple aspects or areas of fitness, go for it. Try it all out, whether it's weightlifting, bodybuilding, even yoga. It's all great for you. It's good for your body. And if you stick with it, you'll go somewhere. Okay. With uh, WSIU, I'm Alan Self. This is Sam Eldridge. Thank you for joining <laughs> us today, Sam. Back to you in the studio. Sam can be found at the Student Rec Center and is always open to giving fitness tips for any and all Salukis. There's a lot of action happening this weekend in the world of Saluki sports. Everything from volleyball to football is in action. We'll have all the details when we come back. Another weekend of Saluki sports is on tap, but they're all away from Carbondale. Tomorrow, the women's volleyball team caps off the 2014 season at Evansville. The men's basketball team plays Kent State in day one of the Kent State Invitational, and the swimming team and diving team finishes the season at Louisville Invitational tomorrow through Sunday. Saturday, the women's basketball team plays their second game of the season versus Wright State. The Saluki football squad closes out the year against number seven Illinois State, and the men's basketball team plays Yale before closing out the invite Sunday at noon against UIC. This is our final newscast on WSIU till February. Thank you for joining us tonight. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter at River Region News. I'm Sean Conway. And I'm Zach Barrett. For more than 100 students who work on Evening Edition, have a great night.